The Portfolio Committee on Agricultural Land Reform and Rural Development and the Portfolio Committee on Employment and Labour will uh, are, are currently embarking on a three-day oversight visit to farms in the northwest and Gauteng. This joint oversight follows the National Assembly's resolution adopted on the 10th of November 2020 for the two committees to assess the impact of legislation and explore opportunities for legislative review. Now, let's uh, discuss this further and get an update on that visit. We're now joined via Zoom by the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, Nkosi Zueli Velile Mandela. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon, sir. Thank you uh, for uh, inviting us and uh, good afternoon. Now, of course, this is a joint uh, venture between the two portfolio committees. How widespread is non-compliance in the farms that you visited um, today and I know over the weekend, uh, starting on Friday? What's the state of affairs? Well, uh, we've been uh, here in the Northwest as a joint portfolio committee uh, sitting made up of employment and labor, as well as agriculture, land reform and rural development. We have been able to meet uh, with stakeholders, that being the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, as well as the Department of Employment and Labor. We met with CCMA as well as stakeholders uh, that represent uh, farm workers and farm dwellers, uh, particularly being COSATU and other NGOs and CBOs that represent farm workers and farm dwellers. We also uh, visited uh, farms so we can uh, meet firsthand with farm owners as well as farm workers and farm dwellers and labor tenants on those farms. Uh, in uh, most uh, instances that we've been, we found that uh, some uh, of the farm owners are not uh, compliant uh, to legislation, particularly when it comes to the national uh, minimum wage as well as uh, registering their employees uh, for uh, uh, likes of UIF. But also we've been looking at uh, safety uh, on uh, the farms uh, for farm workers. Uh, so we look into if they are provided with protective gear, as well as uh, the environment they work in, if they are clear safety signs to ensure that uh, they are trained on the equipment they work on, as well as uh, the uh, 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 different uh, instruments that they use on various farms. But also we've looked at uh, labor tenants that have been evicted from farms. And uh, we have a case that when you look into it, it seems to have been a legal uh, court uh, process and the farm owner has been uh, able to get a court order to evict farm workers. But when you then engage with the uh, farm uh, 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 land tenants, you find that they've been on the farm for 42 years working on that farm, and then they just uh, evicted and sat uh, on the side of the road. And this has showed a failure of the department officials in asserting land tenure rights uh, of those uh, employees. And this needs to be looked into how government officials and departments can ensure that they are able to assert the land tenure rights of uh, farm employees. But also uh, visiting today in Lichtenberg in Hebenia, we've been able to uh, witness a land claim uh, uh, application that was made pre-1998 by uh, Barolong uh, Traditional Council, and it was successful. But uh, when uh, the department uh, looked into uh, the farm that was claimed, they found that there were uh, uh, farm dwellers on the farm and when this was brought to the attention of the, the royal family and the traditional council, the traditional leaders took a decision that they don't want to be seen as uh, white farmers that evict uh, uh, farm dwellers on the farms. And instead, they've uh, uh, given uh, that uh, claim to the farm dwellers so that uh, the department can compensate 
the CPA of the traditional council. And they've uh, put a proposal of getting 80% mechanization and 20% uh, financial compensation into the CPA. So this is uh, indeed impressive to see that indeed traditional leaders are uh, traditional uh, leaders for the people. And uh, it is good to see our communities working jointly with their traditional leaders and we applaud that. While there may be, you know, those small pockets of excellence, uh, the truth of the matter is if you look at some of the living conditions, especially in the province that you were at, uh, particularly the Northwest province, uh, some of those living conditions are just not suitable, especially when you also start to involve families, like you say, that have been uh, living in... Um, basically in, in structures that aren't permanent for, for many, many years. So it seems like the wheels are turning very slowly. Of course, you have also alluded to the fact that you're not happy with the department, but, but what consequences then will some of those uh, officials that are meant to ensure that permanent structures, especially where funding was allocated, I think in one region to the tune of seven million rands, is still not there. And uh, you know, based on, on what we are hearing from our journalists who are on the ground, is that this department then blames that department and then that department blames another and nothing seems to be done. Yes, uh, that is uh, correct of what uh, we've been able to see. And I mean, we've seen best uh, of cases and we've seen worst of cases. If I can speak about the oversight we had at Bonabona uh, Safari Farm, uh, the uh, employees on the farm are living on uh, very uh, uh, good living conditions. We visited the uh, farm uh, 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 housing there, which was uh, really uh, applauded by the committee. But then uh, you go and uh, visit uh, the 52 families that uh, are located at uh, Arte B.S. Fontaine uh, farm which is a farm uh, that was uh, allocated to uh, the 52 families that were evicted. And temporary structures were implemented uh, uh, there for them to have uh, a, a place uh, to reside. Those were totally not adequate. Uh, they didn't even meet the standard. There was no electricity and uh, no ablution facilities and also no access to clean drinkable water. And this is, uh, accept uh, this is totally not acceptable uh, that uh, our government and departments are subjecting uh, our people to inhumane standards of living. And uh, we then inquired as to what is the plan that has been put in place to rectify this. Hence, they were speaking about a budget of 7 million. Then when we inquire, is that 7 million allocated for this financial year being 2022 and 2023? And when will these uh, permanent uh, housing uh, be built? Then you uh, witnessed a situation where departments were pointing fingers at each other that no, it's not with us, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, it's with COCTA. Uh, no, it's not our responsibility, it's with human settlements. So uh, we need to ensure that uh, the minister intervenes on behalf of these families and there is a clear commitment that can be able to ensure that we have a speedy uh, uh, resolution onto these matters. Just as a final question from my side, in as far as the department is concerned, you know, how worried are you about reports of overlapping claims, you know, that relate to lands involving communities in the various provinces, even those that you have not necessarily been to recently? Well, uh, we uh, are assisted uh, by the Concord judgment uh, that prohibited uh, the Land Claims Commission in terms of proceeding with post-1998 claims, particularly those of uh, 2014, which have been set aside, so that uh, the commissioner can be able to resolve all the pre-1998 claims. This then assists in understanding what are the land claims that we are dealing with in order to avoid uh, 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 double claims on uh, those uh, uh, actual uh, uh, properties or lands. We have uh, seen claims that have uh, been uh, made 
for example, by traditional leaders or other CPAs, only to find that uh, there's actually a uh, labor uh, tenants that have been on those farms, working on those farms, and therefore their land tenure rights must also be asserted. So uh, it requires both uh, employment and labor, as well as the Department of Agriculture and Land Reform and Rural Development to be able to find an amicable solution uh, to those issues. All right, Ngozi Mandela, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Really do appreciate you coming on to the show. Thank you, and thank you for having us.